Greetings, HP Touchpad users. This is Reverend Kyle, your Minister of Mobile Devices. And while perusing through my video uh, channel, it occurs to me that I have never done a video showing you how to overclock your touchpad. To some, it may be obvious, but to others, uh, it might not be. And uh, someone actually uh, asked me recently why I haven't done one, and uh, sure enough, uh, I haven't. So uh, this is that video. Uh, I am currently running the uh, well, I'm actually running the classic nerd uh, ice cream sandwich version, which is uh, similar enough to the CyanogenMod 9. Uh, actually, this video is pretty much usable for, uh, in my opinion, any version of the um, touchpad Android, as well as possibly other, uh, other Android devices. So if uh, you're watching this and you don't actually have a touchpad running Android, uh, you might have some other Android device, uh, feel free to follow along. We're going to go into the market. I'm going to actually show you two possible ways to uh, uh, overclock. Uh, one is extremely uh, intense and involving, and the other one is fairly simple. So we're going to take a look at something called System Tuner. Now, System Tuner, in my opinion, if you're going to tweak, and I mean seriously tweak your Android device, this is the app that you're going to want. And I'm going to go ahead and install this here. Uh, and when I mean tweak, I'm not talking about about just overclocking. I'm talking about regulating every possible aspect of the performance of your device. And, uh, you know, I've played around with this quite a bit and um, I don't use it personally. It does ask for super user requests, so be sure that, uh, well, for one thing, you at this point realize that you need to have a rooted device. So if you're not on a touchpad, which is automatically rooted when you install Android, if you're on some other device, you have to be rooted. So here's the tablet layout. Now the, the phone layout looks a little bit differently, but different, but let's go in and take a look at a few things here. Uh, CPU being, first of all, uh, a lot of information up here. It actually shows CPU 0 and CPU 1. Uh, it's showing that CPU 1 is offline. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. This device, like other dual core devices, only turns on the second CPU when it's needed. And so if I was to just, uh, you know, do a, a little bit of something here on the device that would require, oh, there it goes, uh, the second CPU to turn on, then it will. It'll flash on and whatnot. If we were to go in here, uh, there is a lot of information. Like I said, uh, this is probably the most comprehensive piece of uh, information that you can get here. Um, this app really does let you tweak quite a bit. You'll notice here it shows uh, um, the different processors, zero and one, it shows two total processors, CPU. Um, it, right now, I currently have it at 1.5 gigahertz uh, and on demand, and that's uh, that's my normal overclocking. Uh, the, this device here is uh, one point, what is called 1.2 gigahertz uh, dual core, and uh, the, the actual. And I'll just go through this real quick here: conservative, on demand, user space, power save, interactive performance. Not going to go through all of them here, but basically on demand says when you don't need to use the CPU, turn it off or shut it down or turn it down to barely nothing to conserve battery life. Performance in, is basically the exact opposite. Performance is uh, full blast all the time. And I'm just going to turn it on here just to give you an example. You'll notice that... Uh, this one is basically staying full throttle all the time, and then the second one is going to turn on when it's needed. And uh, that is a quick way to kill your battery. I often recommend on demand. You can try different versions. Uh, that's up to you. Now, in terms of the actual overclocking amount, this program will allow you to go up to 1.78 gigahertz. I never go above 1.5. Uh, I know that some people have claimed that the tablet is um, stable upwards of 1.9. Uh, I don't want to take that chance personally. 1.5 is a safe way to go. If you want to uh, go up to 1.7, I guess you could. I don't really see a value in it, honestly. Let's take a look at a couple other things here. Uh, it's going to show you other information. 
I wish I really hadn't clicked on that. That takes a little bit of time. See if I can go back. Good. All right. Um, shows you your memory, and you can go in and set some auto kills, different uh, whatnots here. I don't want this to be a full blown review of System Tuner, but essentially, in terms of overclocking, uh, you can go into boot settings and uh, you can actually. Um, go in here to the boot settings and you know you can force all the CPUs online you can reapply the tweaks and all of that if you want to do this this is probably the comprehensive program to do it with uh, system tuner gives you a lot of stuff here to play with um, and again if I were to jack it up and, and you know it'll it'll overclock that's not what I use typically though. Let me go in back into the market and I'm more of a user friendly uh, kind of guy. Uh, I like to keep things very simple, especially when it comes to something as basic as overclocking. I literally just want to turn a knob and make it go up a little higher. I don't need all of the other hoo-ha. Uh, that's just not the kind of uh, app that I'm looking for for something as basic as overclocking. I use no frills. Uh, this is the app that I'm downloading right now. I'm going to open it up. Now, this is the type of interface that I like because, quite frankly, it shows you a maximum, a minimum, and then a governor. And then there's an I.O. scheduler, and I typically don't play with that at all. I leave it at uh, the N-O-O-P. What kind of governor do I want? Well, do I want on-demand or do I want performance? Again, those are the two things you can do. Power save. Uh, I have had people tell me that power save, save will make their device a little jittery. Uh, again, personal choice, personal preference. On demand, maximum clock. This one will actually let you go up to uh, 1.782. Again, I only recommend 1.5. Minimum clock frequency. You know, I've had people tell me that having it too low is actually going to hinder you because it has to cycle up to a certain megahertz before it can start helping out. Uh, I disagree with that. I think having it at the bottom is uh, is good enough. Um, I know some people that keep it at 384. I don't know if that gives any value. I'll leave that up to you to decide. And then apply on boot. You tap that. You hit apply. It asks for super user request and you hit allow. And from now on, when you reboot your device, it's going to come up and it's going to say these two things where it tells you what it's, re what it's overclocked to and everything is nice and easy. I'm going to recommend the no frills, but if you're a person who likes to really seriously get in, dig in, and tweak some other stuff, uh, System Tuner is going to be your friend. Uh, but one of those two things uh, should get you to where you want to be in terms of overclocking. So hopefully that clears up some things for some of you. Uh, this, to me, seems like a real no-brainer. I could have just told you, oh, just use no frills, period, done, boom. Uh, but some people like to see the videos, so that's why I make them. All right, well, this has been Reverend Kyle showing you how to overclock your Android uh, the easy way.